HMS Victory, a national icon, famous for her leading role in the greatest British naval victory of all time, the Battle of Trafalgar. Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson's flagship and his deathbed. A complex machine of war and a thing of beauty. 200 years after her active career has ended, this warship is once again under threat, but not from the Spanish or the French, but from time itself. Dry rot and the sheer weight of the timbers is causing this vessel to slowly fall in on itself. This old lady of the sea is in desperate need of a makeover. And thanks to private investment to the tune of £25 million, coupled with help from the Ministry of Defence, I'm pleased to say restoration work is well and truly underway. You can see it and you can hear it. But with the economic climate as it is, some would argue expenditure on this scale is hard to justify. But I'm here today to tell you why HMS Victory rightfully deserves to be restored and why she should take a place at the top of British maritime history. This vessel carried 104 guns. She faced her enemy at close range and she's left a legacy which should never be forgotten. Her story started in 1759. Plans and designs were organised by one of the greatest surveyors of the Navy at the time. It took 250 skilled shipwrights to build the hull of this magnificent vessel and they felled 5,000 oak trees to do it. This is the original decking. Once a hull was built, it was left to season in dry dock for three years, far longer than you would normally expect wood to dry out. But they left the wind to blow through it, taking out all the moisture content, which closed the grain up even tighter, making it an impervious to rot, wear and damage. And that's possibly the reason why this vessel has lasted such a long time. After all, she is the oldest commissioned naval warship in the world. After being launched in May 1765, it was actually 13 years later until HMS Victory was called to fight. But once she started, she didn't hold back and took part in more than 10 battles under several different admirals. But her biggest fight took place in 1805 against the increasing threat that was Napoleon Bonaparte. HMS Victory would now set sail on its greatest voyage ever under the command of Vice Admiral Lord Nelson, who was now recognised for his unconventional tactics. When he set sail on the Victory, he'd already lost an arm and the sight in one eye in battle. But it seemed he and the vessel were fearless in their ambition to protect Britain. But could their combined might defeat Napoleon Bonaparte? Britain's flagship, HMS Victory, spanned 227 feet. She housed 820 crew, could reach a speed of 10 knots and displaced a weight of 3,500 tonnes. But the French and the Spanish had twice as many flagships. Napoleon was arrogantly confident. He thought the combined might of the Spanish and the French warships would be too much for Nelson and his fleet. But his military experience was on land, not at sea. Nelson, however, understood the ocean. He assembled his officers here in his cabin around this very table. There's history in the making here. But Nelson's plan was simple and effective. He would sail up behind the enemy, split his fleet into two columns and surround the rear of the enemy lines, isolating it. His clever thinking was orchestrated to a devastating effect. 17 French ships were captured and a knockout blow was delivered to the flagship of Centaur. The battle was won. But while HMS Victory survived, Nelson was shot right here on this very deck and that brass plaque marks the spot where he was shot by a French marksman. He lived long enough to know the battle was won but later died below deck and his body was preserved in a barrel of brandy for the long and arduous journey back home. She returned to Portsmouth where ultimately she would rest. In 1922, restoration began, and it continues today. I went to talk to curator Andrew Bain about the current work. 
So talk me through some of the restoration you're doing. What are you, what are you tackling next on it? Well, we're, we're almost starting at the top and, and working down. Almost every aspect of the ship is going to be examined and repaired where necessary. So as you can see, she's without the top masts at the minute. Yes, we need yeah. to fully refurbish the rigging. We've got problems with rot in the ship where we mm. have rainwater penetrating. So that means some timbers are going to need to be taken out and replaced. And I gather you're using some pretty impressive technology today. Yeah, we've got both ends of the spectrum here. You know, we've chaps on board using traditional caulking methods that would have been used to build the ship 250 years ago and then we're coming right up to date with 21st century techniques so we're going to be doing laser scanning of the hull both internal external so we'll be able to build a 3D computer model that's accurate down to millimeter level but we're going to be doing a lot of conservation work as well so making sure the original material that we do have yeah. is protected so I or my replacement can stand here 50 years from now and still say you're walking the deck that Nelson would have walked. Having been on board HMS Victory, I think the time and the money spent on the restoration here is a testament to our historic naval past. Standing here, it brings to life the accounts of how Nelson protected our country. And that is definitely worth investing in.